Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are making the final part, what, of our granny square sweater vest. All right, what you will need for this tutorial is you will need three blue stitch markers, two orange, yellow, whatever you want to call that color. Now it doesn't have to be blue or yellow, it could be any color you want. Just have three one color and two in another so that you can differentiate on the actual design, okay? Uh, you will need your crochet hook that you used to create, no you won't, you'll need, it'll tell you exactly what hook you will need after, because we've already done our squares, what hook you will need to make your ribbing with. It'll be totally different. I used a five millimeter hook for the squares and for the ribbing, I'm using the four millimeter. But inside the tutorial, it'll show you what size hook to use so don't stress too much about that and I hate to have to admit it guys you will need this guy right here you need to weave in your 2.5 million ends <laughs> you're going to have a few leftover ends so you will need um, to be able to weave them all in all right so there you go guys I don't think I'm going to talk anymore because the tutorial does go for a long time just want to make a very special thanks to the lovely Jay for choosing these colors that you see up on the screen right now, black and white, for our Halloween Granny Square sweater vest. Now, Jay chose black and white. Sadly, I couldn't put black and white up on the screen because it's hard to see uh, as a tutorial. So I used these gorgeous colors that you see right here. Simply divine. I cannot wait to wear this gear. Um, and also, we actually made this gorgeous thigh warmer, as you see right here. Simply divine again. And we made this shawl as well. Isn't it stunning? I love it a lot. All right. And these are our Halloween gear that we are creating for my funny Halloween video that I put together every year. I put together a funny Halloween video. It's just for fun. It doesn't mean anything. Um, there's nothing scary. It's all just quite funny. <laughs> and that's it. All right. So I'm not going to hold you up anymore, guys. I just want you to head off on your own and complete your granny square sweater vest. Good luck all. All righty, guys. So I managed to find a way to extend the camera a tiny, tiny little bit. But I'm going to fold that under. All right. What you should have is, and let me bring the other one out. And I've got hair everywhere. Don't you love it? <laughs> when hair goes everywhere. What you should all have, extra small to small, you should have two pieces that look like that. Three, six, and nine. Mine are just all creased because I've been <laughs> squashing them everywhere. Now, medium to five extra large, you guys should have two pieces that look like that. All right, so now your job is to, once again, the way you've been doing things all along, grab your last two squares, all right? Everyone should have two squares left, all right? Now, extra small and small, you can place yours right on each end of your piece. Medium to five extra large, you place yours there, being careful that you have these two here, all right? So make sure you've got your four across here, then you've got three and then you've got your two pieces there. And if it helps you, which I think is a wise idea, to pop stitch markers on one side, pop stitch marker on the opposite side on one piece. Directly on the other piece, you need to grab another two stitch markers and pop them there. We can do that later. But if it helps, now we'll do it now. All right, sorry guys, I had to go and get them. So pop your stitch markers on both your squares, like that. <laughs> no difference between the colours, just the ones I had in stock, All right? Take the base one out of the way. So what I want you to do now for your version of how you put your pieces together, continue to do that from there to there, then cast off from there to there, and then cast off. Meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next, all right? So attach this piece to that, this piece to that, and I'll meet you back here once you're done. All righty, guys, this is where you should be. Uh, extra small to small, you should have one, two, three rows of three, and then two separate squares that way, yeah? 
medium to five extra large, you should have two rows of four, one row of three, and two on top of that. Now, this is instructions for both, um, I'm sorry, for all three versions, okay? The first version, you need to grab the other piece that you have, which is there, and you need to make sure it's the right, we'll do it again, I will take that off, take that off completely, grab your other piece. Now that's the wrong side of your work, yeah? With your two squares over here, right? Then you need to grab the piece that you just made. This is for the first version um, of what you're doing. The piece that you just did, pop them there. See how you've got one piece there? What I want you to do is do just this. It looks like it's not going to work, but it does. Put your stitch marker there and your stitch marker on the opposite side. <laughs> I'm thinking, where's the corner? There. And then you go to the other piece and you do exactly the same. Now this is for the first version, all right? The first version only. When I say the first version, the other day we did three versions of how to crochet or sew your pieces together. This is the first version. When you sew these two together up the top and you bring it halfway, your top will be complete from one side of the top to the other side, so from the front to the back. Then we're going to attach these. But for now, I just want you, the first version people, to do the same as you just did now. Attach your thread there, go across this way, cast off, attach a thread here, go across this way and cast off. And you guys can meet us back here when you're done. Now, second and third versions of how you put your squares together. Yours is totally different, as you know. Yours will be, that's, um, yours will be like this. The right side of your work on the first piece, on your second piece, the piece that doesn't have the top, will be facing you, yeah? Then you will get the piece that you just did with your two squares there, and you will pop, turn it around, you'll pop the right side on top of the right side there. So right now, you will attach your pieces like this. So you're working on the wrong sides of your pieces. All right, so it's super duper easy. This is the easy part because you've already, you've already crocheted and sewn things across this way. So you pretty much know how to do it. All you're doing is joining your backs and fronts together now. That's it. This is the last join to join your back and front together. And then later you'll need to join the side seams. All right. So that's it, guys. You guys are working along here. First versions are working the opposite way. But you're all pretty much doing exactly the same as you did in your other sewing up the pieces. You're just now attaching the fronts to the backs. All right. Head off on your own. Attach your pieces. Meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, what you should have is that you have just made the head circumference so that you can slip this over your head, yeah? So what I want you to do, let's see how far out we can bring this. Oh, we're trying, we're trying. Alright, so the first join of your work, I want you to grab that piece that you just attached in the middle like that. This is the first join and do just that, all right? Then, that's where your side seam is. You flip that, attach from there to there, from there to there, go over and do exactly the same to the other side, except now this piece is on this side, so you want to attach from there to the top of your second piece, because they're two pieces, one, two, one, two, and from there to the base of your second piece. And you're good to go. 
you are good to go. So now what you need to do, I'm trying to show you so you know what it's going to look like once it's joined there. That is what yours will look like. Medium. I'm trying to get the center here. <laughs> trying to get the center. Medium to five extra large. Yours, once it's attached, will look like that. All right? Extra small to small, your pieces will look like that. Now, that's the first join. The second and the third joins, this is what I want you to do. Our first join, don't go yet because I'm going to show you what to do when you get around here. Yeah, it's a little tricky, that first join. But for everyone else, actually everyone, this is what we're going to do. This is the, this is the second and third joins. You sew along here or you're crocheting along here. Yeah, so this is the wrong side of your work. All right, what I want you to do is find your center that's your neck edge there and this is the wrong side of your work yeah. I want you to attach here oh by the way for small to medium I'm sorry for extra small to small you need to attach from there to there one piece and two pieces so you need to attach just two pieces Two squares, in other words, all right? So from extra small, all you need to do is attach two squares, yeah? Medium to five extra large, you already know that you're attaching two squares because you have a space between yours. So you're attaching two squares. Everyone, all sizes, need to attach two squares, all right? And once again, we'll start from down here. It's easier to see. There's your first corner. And there's your second corner. And what we're going to do, we might actually do this one together real fast. All right, I've got threads everywhere here. I hope you haven't got as many threads as me. <laughs> but there we go, never mind. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to probably do this together real fast. No, in fact, I won't. I'll show you what to do. All right, for the second and third join, all you need to do is keep going all the way down when you get to here. The second join, what you need to do in the centre is just that. Go through there, through there, over again, and just keep going all the way down, yeah? And the same with the third join. When you do your crochet, you're pulling your loop through. You're chaining one, remember, to go over your knot, jumping straight into there, and continue your stitching. Very simple. But with the first join, we're going to do one quickly together now and then you can head off on your own and do your second one all right so first join let's all get together and do ours now for the other two joins you can head off on your own and do both of your sides and I'll meet you back here once we're done all righty guys for the first version of putting our pieces together we're going to start right at the base of your work right at the base We've got all your squares there attached. Grab your needle and thread. Hopefully you've threaded a needle. And just put it through the front like you would normally. Everything's exactly the same. You just do everything the same. And I'm going to get you started just quickly. I don't even need to get you started. Probably your best bid, actually, is... You know what? Let's do just that. Pop your stitch marker in there. Right there. I'm trying to speed up the process, guys, because I want to finish this tutorial today. Get from there, go all the way up to that stitch marker, and I'll meet you up there in a moment. And then just before you start your corner, don't do your corner, wait for me there, and we'll work on that corner together, all right? So just go all the way across, get to the corner, and wait for me there, and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. All righty, guys, so let's get a close-up of all of what I've done here. So I've gone all the way across this side and I got to my stitch marker where there's all these corners here. Now it's fairly tricky. This is for the first join, the first version. I'm in the corner there, all right? So what I want to do is actually be able to attach all four corners. It's going to be a little tricky because we haven't attached it to begin with. So my advice would be firstly to 
go right over to the opposite side we are here yeah we're going to go right over to the opposite side and attach that first corner first somewhere under some base stitching mm -hmm. which is all tied up in all your corners now see all your four corners are all tied up with threads and things now if you haven't weaved them in that's okay we're going to sort them out in a minute but your job now is to try and get into the base of that corner right there the opposite corner to the piece you're using yeah and i'm caught up with everything here i've got tails everywhere all caught up so that's at least closed it now your job is to go through the fronts of each of these like you did when you went in and did the corners here you're going to go through all of the front fronts <laughs> so what you're going to do is go back into the piece that you just came from which was either the base piece or either the top piece depending on what you landed on so go into the top loop like we've been doing all along when we do our four corner joins go to the top loop if I can do it without splitting it I'm, I'm splitting the yarn because I can't see what I'm doing I've done it there you go go into the top loop on that corner and that will close your piece right go back into that other loop you now you've got your two chains there these are your top two chains yeah go into that one I've got a little tail here which is annoying then you want to go to the opposite piece and find those two top chains there's the first one and you're going under it and then you go to the top chain on the other side where you're going around it yeah. and then you're going back into the piece that you just went into but you're going into that top chain remember the top chains the two chains that we created you're going through the top of that chain because we've been working in the base all right you're going through the top of that one and now you're going to attach the other piece and there's one chain there you can see there leave your tails we can work them out later and the other chain is here with your other tail in it so it might get a little tricky but get into it even with that other tail because that's going to be weaved in later now you go back into this square right here and which is going to be even more tricky and you're going to find some top loops from that square into the first one and into the second one as best you can then you want to slide your needle right in through all thicknesses like that it's a little tricky but trust me this is it makes a perfectly straight join now later we'll weave that in so don't worry about it and then you're just going to start your side like normal so you find your inner thread there which is tricky now because you've got a lot of thicknesses in here and you find your inner thread in there and that's it and now you go one to two on this side and one to two on that side I may have to take mine undone because I think I just split the yarn but anyway you keep going all the way across two to three two to three you might find you've got a little knot there just go through that knot you have to otherwise that's it all right so that is pretty much what your corner looks like this tail later we're going to thread in the needle and we're going to put it straight through and we're going to weave it in on the inside all right so that pretty much is it for you you guys can actually keep going all the way across there get to here uh, actually get to there and wait for me there and i'll show you how to lock all those three corners but what i'll get you to do is continue all the way across here get to that stitch marker and i'll meet you there once you're done Alrighty guys, so pretty much this part of your tutorial is for everyone. Now, if you are crocheting your thread, make sure you do your last stitch in there and you cast off like normal. Yep. If you are sewing on the other side, the second version, get to your last chain here, 
All right, that's everyone. Now for the first version, which is the tricky version, uh, we are still kind of in the last stitch there. This is all the same, to be fair, guys. I'm in my third stitch to my first. If I can get in. <laughs> that first chain. I do my chains really tight, guys. Don't do them so tight, yep. Yeah? She says, and she cringes while she's trying to finish. And then I'm going into my third to my I think I already did that, but I'm going to do it again just to tighten this area up like so. Now, let's say for argument's sake, this looks like it's not going to match. Let's get a close up. All right. Just for this stitch alone. All right. For now, we'll do the rest later. Notice how I just tightened up that thread. All right. See where we are here. All I want you to do is jump into, if you can, it's a little tight here, into the back of the first chain to the second chain of that one there and pull that through. I'll do the other versions in a minute, right? And then you jump straight back into that first chain here on your corner. It's on your opposite side of the corner, yeah? So you jump straight back into there. Now, again, if you didn't do this, we can sort this out when we do our borders, all right? So don't stress too much. You're going into the first one, and then you're going into that second one right there. And what that's going to do, oops, get rid of that thread there, is going to close everything up, all right? What I want you to do from here, remember how we went through those top loops? We're going to do the same. Just go through one top loop on this side. Again, this is only for... This first version of um, sewing our pieces together all right and then one on this side you don't have to go through all of them like we did before just go through one and all that'll do is tighten up the area yeah and then go through the one on this side like that and then the top one on the opposite side right there which is too tricky because we've gone into it so many times I'm on the top one no, that's not the top one. Top one is down. There it is. Hello. She's singing now, guys. Dear me. All right. And what that's done is it's just closed up your corners. Don't stress if it doesn't look right. We are going to be putting our crochet in there, there, and there later. All right? So don't stress if it doesn't look right. All right. So now your job is to, it's super easy now, grab this thread anywhere you want. You can go into the back of the stitch or you can jump straight into the center of your work there pull that thread through but before you do hold it there pop your needle in and give it a tug and what that will do is tighten up that whole area you can weave that in or you can do what i'm going to do which is super super easy chop it for now give yourself a nice long tail we're going to crochet over that later when we do our I think this is the armhole. <laughs> it's the armhole. When we do our armholes, we're going to crochet over that later. But for the meantime, what I want you to do for now is to, and I've done mine already, so you can see it. Give me one moment while I bring this out. For the um, new version people, once you've done one side, you go ahead and do the other side. All right. This one's already done, so you know what you're doing. But what I'm going to do with the other side is show the other um, versions what to do in the corner. Again, if you look carefully at this corner, I was probably going to leave that and then just use the crochet hook to close it all up later. So if you've already cast off and you think, oh, I've left it and I've got this big, don't worry about it because I will show you how to close that up later. In fact, I think I'm going to leave one on its own and have the three of them done because we have the three versions and I'm going to leave one not closed up so that you can see what you can do with the crochet hook instead all right you go ahead and continue your side meet me back here and I'll show the other two versions what to do now all right so for the second version of our stitch let's just assume we're on the second version with the sewing together I'm going to pretend, oh, I'm going to pull it all the way through because I haven't got much thread here. Let's get a close up. I'm going to pretend like I got to the end of the row right there. No, you can't see it now because all my threads are sewn together. Everything's sewn together for, 
from my piece so it's a bit hard to see but let's say you're sewing your thing your piece through and you've got this massive space I would not worry about it I'd go into that last let's call it the last first chain on this side and the first chain not in the center but right on the opposite side of the piece so you skip that center completely if you've got a really big gap in that center my suggestion would be go into that first chain go into the center chain and then go into the first chain on that side pull it all through the whole thing will close up and then all I want you to do is to go right back through the whole piece make your loop like so it's not going to work for me because my thread's too small and then just pull it through real tight all right don't cut it because we will crochet over that piece later and I've just made a knot which I didn't want to do <laughs> don't you love it all right so that's that version and I'm really rushing through this guys because I want to get this done all right the crochet version oh, let's grab some thread here real quickly the same with you you have just done your third stitch on uh, let's just say we'll go into that second last stitch it's going to be going over all my work all right and avoid the, the loops and threads you've got everywhere we're going to do something about that in a moment and that's before we put our sleeves on we're going to do something about that all right so let's just say I'm gonna do this chain and put a single crochet in there because no um, a slip stitch not a single crochet hello you've been slip stitching not a single crochet so you're going into that third stitch on this side you know your final stitch on this side and your final stitch on the opposite side like so and what you will have is one corner two corners and the three corners what I want you to do is go into that first corner jump into the second corner and do your slip stitch go back into that same first corner and then into the second corner on this side right there and do your slip stitch as well yours will be tight it'll be awkward but later we can crochet through that personally I wouldn't between me and you the past two uh, versions I wouldn't even close up my corners because right now I'm going to show you all how we're going to crochet the ribbing around our um, sleeve edge there and we are all doing the same thing with this the only difference is extra small and small will have to omit certain stitch markers which we'll talk about in a minute all right but for everyone else I would suggest even leaving those three corners open like this it's not going to hurt it because we are going to literally crochet all three corners together or actually really it's the two corners together um, but it kind of all sits perfectly and it's um, not noticeable and I'll tell you that and how I know it's not noticeable is let's bring this down to that I've already done one sleeve all right and I'm going to show you that sleeve right now and I turn it in the right way all right so that's the sleeve that I did all right one side that we sew together with the new version of sewing was all sewn together properly and is nice and neat the other side I didn't sew together and still I crocheted the two corners together there it still looks neat you cannot see that that was not sewn in that all three areas were not sewn in so it really doesn't matter whether you sew those close together like that or whether you just leave them open it's not going to be a problem now before we start I'm going to pop a little information up on the screen right there as you can see these were the crochet hooks that you used for your pieces all right what I want you to do now I'm going to wait a few seconds I'm going to put another set of writing up I want you to change your hook size to this hook size all sizes have a look at your hook size it'll say change to and that's what you'll change to all right so my um, piece I used a five millimeter for my squares so what I'm going to do is use the four millimeter for uh, the uh, ribbing now yours truly accidentally on the black top which is this one you see right there <laughs> the black top I accidentally used the four millimeter for one sleeve and a 4.5 millimeter for the other I just forgot that I used the four 
and then did the other one in a 4.5. It doesn't make a difference. It's made a slight difference. I can feel one's a little bit tighter than the other, um, but it's not a complete difference. So that's okay if you've messed up your hook size or if you've only got one hook size less. So let's say you worked on a five millimeter hook, you could use a 4.5 if you want. I would suggest for the sleeves dropping right down to four because the sleeves are relatively loose if you used a five millimeter. If you use a 4.5, then you need a 3.5. If you used a four, then you need a three, that kind of thing. If you use a 5.5, you need a 4.5, etc., etc. It's all up on the screen there right now. So go find the hook to suit your size and let's get on with the sleeves alrighty guys before we do anything at all have a look at your work you may find something like this on the front of your work that hasn't been weaved in at the back all right, let me move all this out the way because it's only going to make the screen blur all right, so what I did, I threaded my needle off air because I struggle with this one. Now, this is a smaller needle with a smaller eye. For the weaving in of ends, my suggestion is to not use a thick needle on cotton because it's hard to work with on cotton, all right? But if you've got one needle, that's fine. Take your sewing needle and right where the thread is coming from, literally where it's coming from, all you're going to do, pop your needle through that thread pull it straight through to the inside of your sweater, pull it through before you do anything, check it. Make sure it looks normal and it does, there's no issues. So when we turn it inside out with our needle, we are going to weave this guy in. You can weave it in anywhere you want. And if you like, and you don't wanna do it my way where I split stitches, you can just go through each stitch. Now with this needle, I'm struggling with this. It's actually splitting the stitch anyway, so my preference is to actually split it. But you guys can just go through each stitch all the way across if you like, like so, and just pull the needle through. I'm not going to, I am actually going to split some threads and work into the corner of that piece. Now this, only do this if you've got threads, for now, only weave in if you've got threads in front of your work, like in the corners there, you know where you've um, slip stitched your double crochet and you've got a thread there, just do it for those ones. Don't do it for everything else because all these other threads here, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with those when we put our border rows on. It's so much easier. All right, in the meantime, there's the ribbing of our very first sleeve, which I did off air, okay? We're going to do one sleeve together and then you're going to do yours off air. Now, there are two, um, two big instructions here for this. Alrighty guys, for extra small and small and three extra large and five extra large, you'll need two stitch markers, okay? For medium to two extra large, you will need five stitch markers. Three in one color, two in the other. Let's just try small, extra small and small. You guys will have a seam line that looks like that, where there's just a join in the middle and you've got your two corners, all right? What I want you to do is grab your stitch marker, your orange one, and pop it in the, it doesn't matter with you guys, but anyway, pop it in the the last, let's go through the whole stitch, Mary. What are you doing? Pop it in the last stitch of that last set because you're going to make your first stitch here. That's going to be a chain two and then your first stitch will be these two together. Don't worry about that for now. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So extra small and small, you pop your stitch marker here. All right? All other sizes you need to, this is your armhole. Let's bring that out a little bit more like that. That's your armhole, right? So that's your neck edge, that's your armhole, all right? We have that extra bit, extra small and small, theirs would have been like that. So they didn't need to do what we're doing. 
But for medium to 5 extra large, that's all other sizes, you need to go to your corner there, that's your corner cluster, and then go one, two. And in that third one, right there, right in the centre stitch, you've got your one, two, three stitches, right in that centre stitch there, pop your yellow, orange, whatever that is, stitch marker. And let's check it out. All right. So if you were to lay your piece flat like that, your stitch marker will be flat bang in the middle of our armpit right there. Our underarm, that's kind of our armpit. That's our underarm right there. All right. So pop your yellow there or your orange, whatever you want to call that color. Um, and everyone's got their stitch markers in. Now, for medium to two extra large, Everybody else, just wait there for me. Medium to two extra large, you need to get your blue stitch markers and pop them in the centres of each square in your round. So you've already got one there because that's your underarm. Go to your very next square and there's your corner. Then you go one, two and three and you pop it in that centre stitch right there. So there's your corner, one, two, three if you wanted to check, yeah. Then you go to your very next square, grab another blue, find your center, which is, that's your corner, and you go one, two, three, and pop it in that center stitch right there. And this is why we're using the blue. I'm gonna twist mine around again so that it doesn't tie up on me. So that's what we just put in. Go to your very next square and pop in your last blue stitch marker. And there's your corner and it's one, two, and there's your third one. And that's the middle stitch right there. All right, the next mark you come to will be our joins. Now, all sizes, whenever you come to a join, you're going to be doing two together stitches, which I'll show you in a minute. That is all joins. You'll be doing two together at every join, all sizes, every join. All right. So that's that. Now, we still have this stitch marker. That's the one we're going to use for our first stitch. All right, so, whoops. Grab your hook. Now remember, you are using a hook size smaller than the hook size that you used. Again, if you really love the loose fit, go back to your normal hook size, all right? So let's start from, oh, let's start from, our orange stitch marker. Everyone needs to start from the orange stitch marker. However, in that stitch marker there, we're supposed to be doing two together. So what I want medium to five extra large to do is pop your hook in the stitch before that stitch marker. Extra small and small, you pop your hook in the stitch marker, all right? So medium to five extra large, pop your hook in there extra small, yours is in your stitch marker. All right, everyone take out this stitch, stitch, stitch marker. All right, and grab your thread. Excuse me, we're not even in frame. Grab your thread, pop it over your hook, pull a loop through, and just, you know, like normal, giving yourself a long tail. That's probably too long. And passing it forward like so. It is a bit long. We'll give it a cut a bit shorter there. All right, and back up here again. So what you're going to do here is, oh my gosh, these nails are so distracting, chain one and two. So grab your stitch marker and pop it in your second chain. This is all sizes right now, okay? All sizes need to start like this. Extra small, small, and three extra large to five extra large, you wait here. Medium to two extra large only. You're going to do your first two stitches as a half double crochet two together in the US terminology, or a half treble, two together in the UK terminology. Probably for now, we won't crochet over the tail, so I can show you the stitch. Next time we will, all right? On the next sleeve, you can crochet over the tail. In the meantime, you're popping your, your hook into the stitch, pull a loop through, that's three loops on your hook. Some people put a yarn over the hook as well and then go in the next stitch. You can do that if you want. I find it very thick, yeah? I'm just gonna hop straight into the next stitch 
and pull a loop through and you should have four loops on your hook. If you did it the other way, you should have five loops. Yarn over your hook and pull through all four loops on the hook like so. So what you've done is you've got your chain two, which will act as your first half. And then you've combined these two stitches together to make it one. And that's your second half double or half treble. All right. I say all because we're doing US and UK today. And then you're going to put a half double crochet into every stitch until you get to a join. All right. Now, before you do that, let me just show extra small and small what you need to do. All right. Let's pretend that you have chained your two. And we'll chain the two just for the sake of doing it. And we'll leave a knot there so you can see what I'm doing. You would be here. Yeah, this is extra small and small only. Everybody else just wait there for me. Okay. Chain one and two. Pop your stitch marker in. Yeah. And now your job is to actually do your half double US, half treble UK, these two corners together. All right. So you're just going to go into the first corner and you'll pull a loop through and you have three loops on your hook. Jump straight into the next corner, pull a loop through and you have four loops on your hook. You'll have five if you popped a loop over the hook before you did that second move. I'm not going to. Um, so I've got the four loops on my hook. Make sure it's all fairly, not pulling tight, but tight enough. Yeah. Yarn over your hook, pull through all four loops on the hook like so. And then you are going to be careful, make sure you jump into that very first stitch there with a half double US, half treble UK, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And your job is to keep going in every stitch doing your half double US, half treble UK. All right. So that is yours. It's a little bit awkward here, but you, you need to do your half double US, half treble UK, two together in every join you come to. All right. So all sizes, you are the same. Every join you come to, you will be doing your two together. And for medium to two extra large, any stitch marker and every join you come to, you will be doing your two together. We're going to do it together this row anyway. I'm not going to leave you in the lurch, but here we go, everyone. You should be doing your half double US's, half treble UK's. <laughs> I'm even pluralizing everything. Is that a word? <laughs> half double US, half treble UK, all the way across your piece until you get two. Well, you know, we want to go over those tails too, by the way. So there's the stitch before the tail. So I pop my hook in. I grab that stitch and pop it over the hook like so and just crochet over it. All right. So then you've got this knot here. You can either go into the knot or into the slip stitch. I like to go into the slip stitch with my half treble. Sometimes I go into the knot depending on the actual tutorial, but usually into the slip stitch. Half treble in the second stitch, half treble in your third stitch. And everyone, when you get to your corners, this is what you need to do. Oh, actually, this is a corner, guys, that has three corners to it. Now, this is relatively tight. So if you wanted to, you could just do your two together from these two, this one and this one here. If you find it's really big, you need to do three together. But I find that really bulky and I would avoid it. Even having a little tiny hole there, I would still avoid it. But you can try it. First, we'll try the two together, which is yarn over your hook into your corner, pull a loop through. Ignore this corner, go into the next corner, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, tighten it up. Yarn over your hook, pull through all three loops on your hook. And there you go. Make sure that's tight in that stitch, yeah? And then hop into the first stitch. Now, this first stitch will be tugged right in there. You must find it, yeah? It goes real tight in there and pop it in there. Otherwise, you'll be a stitch short at the end of the row, which makes a difference when we're doing our 
front post and back post half double crochets US half trebles UK in the next round. All right. So just be weary of that. That was a mouthful, wasn't it, guys? <laughs> that was a mouthful all right so now your job you're going to come up to a stitch marker soon get excited now for the rest of you every time you come to a uh, a join you do your two together oh i forgot to show you the three together you can do the three together let's take that undone sorry guys we'll do it again i'll i'll cut over this part or i'll put it on fast in a minute until we get to the next stitch marker but for now i just want to show um people how to do the three together if their their gap is too big like if you've got a really big space between all three um, in fact one of these sides of the sleeves does have it and I'll show you that later but I'll show you anyway you start your half double or half treble yeah hold it there jump into the first corner now you can do this if you want I don't like it but try it yeah jump into your very next corner I just find this way too full. Yarn over your hook and pull through all five loops, I think that was. And then into that first stitch, guys. Don't forget that first stitch. Yeah. And off you go doing the rest of your row. I'm going to take this undone because I personally don't like the three. Let me show you again how, how that looks. I don't like that look in there. In fact, I'm going to take it undone now and then we'll pop it on fast. Yeah. It might help. That way we can all meet up at the blue stitch marker. So I'm going to start this stitch right there. Yep. Skip that centre one. Jump into the second one. And I've got four on my loop, my hook. Pull through all four loops. And then move it over because you don't want to miss that first stitch right there. It's really tight, but it's there. And you must go into that first stitch, yeah? And I'm going to pop this on fast until we get to the blue stitch marker and off we go. Alrighty, we are close to that stitch marker. If you don't have a blue stitch marker, you continue till you get to the next uh, join. Alright, so I've got a stitch before the stitch marker, so I'm doing a normal half double or half treble. Taking out the stitch marker and over the next two stitches, this is only for medium and two extra large, you are doing your two together. Like that, there's your three. Straight into the next stitch, pull a loop, you've got four, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook and that's it. And then you're doing your halves all the way across until you get to your next join. I'm going to flip my work because it's completely and utterly twisted. <laughs> All right, so get to your very next join. Oh, gosh, what am I doing here? Get to your very next join. I'm All right, so here we are. That's the third stitch in that set. So what I've got is this little two joins here, which is pretty much what uh, Extra Small and Small had to begin with when they did their start of their round. Oh gosh, what have I done? Tangled everything. Yarn over my hook. I'm going to pop my hook in the first corner, pull up a loop, tighten it up a little, skip over your seam into the second corner, pull up a loop, four loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops, yarn over the hook, and straight into the first stitch don't miss it it might be tugged right under there you need to get it yeah with your halves all the way through and I'm going to pop this on fast until we get to the blue stitch marker Alrighty, so I have a stitch before the stitch marker. Now again, if you don't have stitch markers, you just continue all the way until you get to your next seam line. Now we're gonna take out that stitch marker, medium and medium two, two extra large. You're doing your two together. Like that. All right, and pop it on fast until we get to our very next seam and off we go.
All right, now that was our last stitch and my yarn has gotten all tangled up here. <laughs> all right, so what we have here is our seam line yet again, yarn over our hook in the space, pull a loop through. I've got a tail here. I'm just gonna pass it at the back, jump into the very next corner space, yarn over, pull through all four loops. And oops, oops, <laughs> caught up. Once again, we're going to jump into that very first stitch. Don't forget it. And off you go doing the rest. All right, pop this on fast and off we go. Alrighty, so uh, we are now at the very next stitch marker. I tell a lie, I've got one more stitch just before it. She's lying, guys. She's lying to you. All right, take out that stitch marker and we are doing what? Two together. Yeah. Just give me a moment. I'm just going to flip my work around because it's all tangled up here now. And actually, I will pop this on fast until we get to our next seam and off we go. All right, so we're now at the corner with the three joins. And there's one that's really separated. That's the one I said that's really spread out. So what you're going to do is start your half treble there. Now, extra small and small, you won't have these, so don't worry about it. Um, skip that center, jump straight into your next corner and just tighten it up. Yarn over your hook. Pull a loop through like so. And then don't forget to go into your first stitch, which will be tight for sure. And off you go, doing your half. Just put this on fast until we get to the stitch marker and off we go. Alrighty guys, here we are close to our stitch marker. Everybody needs to be near their stitch marker. Um, oops, oops, all sizes. Now, if you look carefully, my stitch ended there. My chains are in that very next stitch. So don't put a half double in there or you're going to double up. Just slip stitch to join. This is all sizes now. All sizes are going to do exactly the same thing in the next round. Pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. You will always have this chain two here in every round, but it is actually under the arm so it doesn't affect you at all. Nobody will see it. All right, chain one and two, and once again, you're gonna pop your golden, orange, yellow, whatever you wanna call this stitch marker. It looks orange to me, but at the moment, it kind of looks yellow in front of my orange nails, but I think it's actually an orange yellow. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. All right. Now, what we're going to do here is talk about our front post, back post. In actual fact, it's a half double US or half treble UK front post and back posts. All right. So we're going to start off with the front post. Oh, by the way, if you haven't done this particular stitch before, I've left a couple of links in the description box down below. One for the normal video that I've done here on the channel and one as a short here on YouTube just recently. All right. So there you go. I've left both links there and you can check both of them out. In the meantime, we're going to start off by putting our yarn over our hook, just avoiding that stitch marker. Now your, your stitch is here. Your chains are here. Your next stitch is the stitch that you did your half two together in the previous round. Now everyone should have that half two together there. These are cord posts that we've formed here. The top bit is stitches and the base here, these stems are posts. I used to call them sticks when I was younger. <laughs> sticks, can you believe it? You've got your yarn over your hook, go into the big space around your post and through the next big space. All right, so you go in, yeah, right around it and into the space. You pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, 
yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. That was a front post. To do a back post, we've got to go through those spaces in the opposite direction. So yarn over your hook, you go into the space of the next stitch. There's your next stitch right there. You've done this stitch. Now you want to do the next one. So you're going behind the space around the post into the next space and you're working literally through the back of your work so you pull your loop through to the back and I'm doing it real slowly for you yarn over your hook pull through all three loops the back post is a little tricky yeah yarn over your hook we're going back to the front post so there's your post you go into the space around the space pull a loop through like so three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops now let's go back to the back post again around the back through to the back again pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and that's pretty much it front and back it's a little tricky the first row the second row becomes really easy guys so this one here is a little tricky okay there's another one there we're doing front it's really tight stitching here because of that chain yeah so you're going around we've done the front yeah going around the back and around that tight stitching if yours is like mine then it's tight just be weary not to miss any stitches or you'll be short at the end of the round and there's another post you're going through the front and around the back pull a loop through around the back and into the front that kind of thing yeah and now you're doing the back one All right before we continue I just want to show you something so you understand where the stitches are in your base row we did one stitch right close to the corner there in this row we did our last stitch there that means that this stitch flat bang right in the middle is one post all right so I'll show you that again when we're doing this we're up to the back post uh, so the back post in the last stitch before the corner there and now we're going to do the front post before we do the front post there's the stitch that's already in the stitch on the next side so this is actually your front post stitch it's a little bit thinner but that's your stitch so pull it through like so and doing your front post now you're going to do your back post in that stitch around that one there all right hope that made sense for you uh, front post in the next if it's anything like mine it's tight stitching which is which can be a little tricky yeah um, that was front wasn't it yeah so we're doing back I just want to show you one more where that center um, stitch is for medium to two extra large but everybody else continue going doing your front post and back posts all other sizes I mean all right all right I'm getting close to that center stitch doesn't affect everyone it just affects medium to two extra large all right so that's the stitch before the big I don't know blobby looking thing <laughs> so what are we on we're on front post front post around this stitch and back post around the blob all right pop your hook around the, the blob <laughs> it looks like a blob um that's how i can how i can say it. it's actually a post but it kind of looks like a blob and then you just keep going all the way through all right i don't think i need to show you anymore you know how to get into the groove of that center well we might just do one more center and then you can head off on your own Oh, here we are we're almost there all right so that stitch right there is in your last stitch 
that stitch right there is in your first yeah so what are we on that's a front we're going to do a back so this will be a back your center will be the front and your next stitch will be the back so let's do the back around this stitch right here and then we're going to do a front in that really odd looking stitch post if you will and then we're going to do a back in the stitch above that little stitch all right it looks like it's not going to be right but it actually is right okay now if you miss some stitches don't worry if it's out of whack don't worry the only problem is if it's out of whack in this row it's going to make your whole ribbing out of whack in the next row all right you can adjust it to suit really you can oh why am I showing you anymore all right guys what you're going to do I'm going to let that stitch out because I just got it all caught up. What you're going to do now, you're going to actually do your front post, back post, all the way through these stitches, avoiding those tails, all the way through, get to the last stitch or the second last stitch before your stitch marker. Either one of them is fine. All right, so do your front post, back post. What did we end off in? Oh, actually, I took mine undone, so you know where you ended off. Do your front post, back post, all the way through. Get to those last two stitches and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, I'm actually on my front. I'm telling a lie, let's try it again. Back post there. Yarn over my hook, I'm going to do my front post here. Now, it should have been my back post right here. But my chains are attached to that back post. So we're not doing the back post. The chains will classify as the back post in this round. So all you're going to do <laughs> is slip stitch in that tight stitch. So slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker which is right there. I should have left it in. Might have made it loose for me. <laughs> there you go. I'm just going to have to tighten everything up because I left a really big loose stitch. All right. And that is, that's way too tight now. That's pulling. <laughs> and that's your round. Guess what, guys? Chain one and two. Pop your stitch marker in here. Like so. And in the next stitch, you have, that's your chain two, that's the first front post that you did, yeah? So you're going to do a front post around the front post. This is how easy this row is going to be. You're going to love it. And a back post around your back post. That was my nail, ouch. <laughs> Do a nice close-up so you can see where I'm going. That's the front post around your front post. And your back post is right around your back post. All right. That is a super duper easy stitch. Now, now that you've got them there and you can see the front posts are sticking forward and your back posts are going backwards. So you're going into the front posts on the next one because it's sticking forward and into the back posts of the back one because it's sticking towards the back. All right. So that is all we need to do for this round super duper easy i'm not going to show you i think if you can if you want to you can keep watching this part again but it's super easy guys we've just done a front post yeah so then you do your back post with that one your front because it's sticking up back front back front back the corners don't affect you anymore your two togethers don't affect you all you need to do is do your front post and back post that didn't work let's try that again there you go. Your front post and back post all the way in the round. Get to this stitch marker and I'll meet you there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, so here we are at the end of this row and you can see the ribbing 
forming. How gorgeous is that? Now this is a ribbing that I don't usually use on the channel. I usually use the other ribbing where you chain up six, let's say for argument's sake, uh, it might be seven depending on the size that you want. Then you single crochet down, slip stitch two across, and then you work along those stitches with your single crochets in the back loop. Chain one, oh, actually we don't even chain, I can't even remember now. We turn and we come back down and we keep going up and down that way. This is a stitch here that I don't usually use, but there you go, I'm using it now. All right, so I have one more front post here to go. So I'm going to do my front post without getting it caught in the stitch marker, like so. And then slip stitch into the top chain or the chain with a stitch marker in it. Pull the loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook, chain one and two and get ready for some instructions. Pop. Oops, yes, that's right. Pop your stitch marker in there. What I'm going to do, because I'm going to walk away from my work, I'm going to pop my stitch marker, another colour, just in the loop. So if I walked away, no one can pull that loop under. All right. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to give you some instructions for this arm now. Oh, raining, raining, raining. <laughs> With hailstones, guys. All right, let's talk about what we're going to do now. All right, what I want you to do is do one more row exactly the same. Cast off, weave in your end, go all the way over here and repeat it for the other sleeve. Now, as you can see, I've done the other sleeve. Mine's totally finished. So what you need to do now is do just that. Repeat this row, cast off, weave in your end, jump to the other side, repeat what you did here, over here, meet me back here after the hailstones, and <laughs> can you hear the hailstones? Meet me back here after the hailstones, and we will do <laughs> the collar. <laughs> Alrighty guys, here we are back again, <laughs> end of the hailstones, <laughs> a day later actually to be exact, but we won't go there. Um, Alright, so don't you love it, she's so naughty. Uh, take out your uh, stitch marker, you are at the end of this round. Alright, uh, I do have one front post left to do, it's a little tricky because we've slip stitched it to join. So you do your front post, your last front post. Then you slip stitch into that extremely tight stitch marker. Stitch. <laughs> She's so naughty. Pull the loop through. Guess what, guys? See how I tighten that up real tight? Pull up a loop. You're done. Now, if you try this on and you find that it's a little bit loose for your liking, do another round and then cast off. If you find this a little too loose for your liking, do one more round and then, <laughs> she can hurry up and do it, cut your work, grab this thread. Now this is under the arm, so it's not gonna be noticed. If you wanna do that fancy join, slip stitch to join, you can. I don't like it. <laughs> you could do it if you like, but I'm just gonna go, straight back into a stitch. I might actually, which way is the thread going? Yep, I'll go straight back into a stitch right there. Any stitch you want, just go through the stitch like that. Just make sure you can't see the needle from the front. Yep, yep, we're just gonna pull it through. <laughs> it's stuck, of course it is. Like that, gone. Your knot is gone. All right, that fancy join that everybody likes to do, they can go ahead and do it. I'm not doing it anymore. I don't like it. <laughs> She's so upset about that join. <laughs> it does nothing for my work. It really doesn't. And I can manage to work around the knot all the time. And I've been doing it for 100,000 years, um, exaggerating by a few thousand, of course. So I won't be doing the fancy join. I'm just going to do my own join that I'm so used to because I'm such a stick in the mud like that. <laughs> She's such a stick in the mud. All right, so you are literally weaving in. Notice how I wasn't telling you what to do, but I think you kind of know what you're doing. Just weave in and out of some back stitches. Make sure 
it's actually part of the back post yeah make sure you can't see the needle yeah and pop it oh, I don't think it's coming out but I'll do one more for the sake of leaving the tail down the base there and I've just literally split some yarn absolute no-no um, but you can't see the needle here right so what we're going to do is pull it down oh, it's real tight that thread is not going to come out <laughs> way so tight all right so that's done I don't want to waste too much of your time but I do want to show you this remember when I said um, here at the joins don't worry about casting these threads off because we can sort them out later I'm gonna leave that one because it looks like I've crocheted over that one but here's one I haven't crocheted over it's just sitting loose so what you want to do cut this to get rid of the frayed edge for starters All right, what you want to do, thread your needle by the way, <laughs> you're here to stop that from opening. You literally want to go into the upper stitches, all right? Just make sure you cannot see your needle from the back, yep, and just pull that needle right through. Oh, I didn't give myself a short enough tail, there we go. Pull that needle right through. And get this needle to work for me yeah and then what you want to do is go once again this is the inside of your work see it's like that so that's the inside of your work you're going to go up some stitches of your back post yeah just check that you can't see the needle there that's just sticking out a little space there but just check you can't see the needle and we can't which is good pull that loop through and you're going back down I might have to turn it around it's hard to see the other way and you're going back down splitting some stitches absolute no no check you can't see the needle and you can't which is great oh wait I've just pulled a thread there all right if you're not happy with that and you want to do some more then just do one more which I always do I'm not going to go all the way up because it may show I'm just going to go three quarters of the way there you go it won't show but still just in case give your work a cut now you can do yours a lot longer you can go around the sides there up another one you can go anywhere you like I just wanted to show you those two threads so that you know what you're doing and I'm not showing you anymore all the other threads you're doing exactly the same thing for this arm and exactly the same thing for the other arm which I haven't weaved in either all right grab your top and place it in front now find let's bring this out a little bit find which side that you want to be the back they should both be the same I'm gonna use this one for the back I like the other side better no big no reason just so I like it better all right so what you want to do grab your orange or yellow stitch marker and once again just find a center stitch so this is your corners one two three and right flat bang in the middle of that center stitch you've got one two three right on number two pop your stitch marker there you want to check one you're here one two three here one two three all right so it all measures up that's the center back if you want to leave yours on the top of your shoulders up the top there by all means you can leave it there it doesn't matter Alrighty guys, I forgot to mention that you are currently using a smaller hook for your sleeve ribbing. You must go up half a hook size. Whatever hook you're using, go up half a hook size to do your neck edge. Your neck edge will become too tight if you use the smaller one. Alright, so no matter whatever hook you're using, you go up a hook size. I use the four. So now I need to go up to a 4.5. I did it with mine. This one here is fairly, fairly tight on me. I did it with the black one, but I forgot to do it with the blue. So it doesn't come across too tight. It's not that bad, uh, but I still think you should be going up half a hook size. So no matter whatever hook size you're currently using, go up half a hook size to do your neck edge. Just grab your thread. I'm rushing this because I think you know what you're doing in a minute once I show you. Pop your hook, this is all sizes guys, pop your hook in that stitch, you're chaining one and two, taking out that stitch marker. And in this case, 
we're going to crochet over that tail. We didn't do that before because we had tails and things. We're going to do that now. All sizes, pop your hook in your very next stitch. Whoops, I forgot to put a stitch marker in the, the top of the chain too. So do that now, guys. <laughs> it's going to be very tight. You don't have to worry about this, guys. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll fix mine up off air. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and just do your half double crochet in every stitch you come to. I'm going to rush now. And there's your corners all right and in this case we have the three corners mine is really tight and even if yours isn't tight I still want you to join just the two together so yarn over your hook I'm gonna go over this one tail that's at the back pop your hook in start your half double this is all sizes here now again if you want to put your yarn over again and then hop into there you can I find it too bulky yeah so you start your half double you go into there like so and one two three and four and you tighten it all up and then finish your half double there then remember you move it over and you get into that first stitch right there and then you half double in every stitch until you get to your next um, join which is a three join again all right so what I'm going to do is pop this on fast for you and we'll all meet once we get to that next join this is all sizes here and off we go Alrighty guys, I'm on my very last stitch there of this section. So, now this one's real tricky. I've got a stitch that's sticking out in front. I'm going to really tighten up that thread, being careful not to pull too much. Yeah, but tighten it up a little. It's already got a knot on that one. And once again, I'm just going to pop it at the back. So it's out of the way. Now we once again have one, two, and three joins. Now this one's a wider join, but still I'm not going into that stitch. I'm finding that really bulky. So what I'm going to do is start my half double in the first corner, like that. Skip that corner, the second one, and jump into my third, tighten it all up, and pull the loop through like so. Once again, making sure you get into that first stitch there and you continue again all right it's super easy you've done this before guys you've all done it with the arms yeah all right well let's have a quick look at what we're doing i'm going to flip my work so you can see what we've done so far all right so what we've done is all of that what i want you to do now is to continue this row once again crocheting over your tails, joining the two corners, go all the way around, join the two corners, get back to the stitch just before the stitch marker right there. And I'll meet you there once you're done. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do next. So continue all the way. This is all sizes, exactly the same. Go all the way, get to that stitch marker and I'll meet you there in a moment. Alrighty guys, here we go. I'm not sure if I'm forgetting to say half trebles as well for UK. Um, I think I did, so I do apologise in advance there. Um, but pop in your half double US, half treble UK in the very last stitch. And I say the very last stitch because if you look carefully and you raise up that chain stitch, your chains are in that next stitch. Alright, so what you want to do is, oh, that's right, I didn't fix this up, did I? Slip stitch into the top of your chain two, the very top chain two. And I did not fix up my tight chain two. 
Don't crochet that last chain tight, guys. I'm telling you now, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I really struggle in every tutorial. All right, so you do tighten that first stitch up, then you chain your one, tighten that up, and you chain two. Pop your stitch marker in that top chain two, right there. All right, and what you're going to do is the same thing you did with the, the sleeves. You're just going to pop your yarn over your hook and do a front post in your first stitch. Pull a loop through, like so. Front post half double crochet US, front post half treble UK. Now you're going to do your back one. Stay in frame, Mary. You're going to do the back one like that. You know how to do them. You've done the whole two sleeves by now, yeah? So uh, I've just done a back post. We're going to do a front post here. Yeah, a back post on this one here. All right, now before we continue, you have a stitch. You've just done your back post on one stitch from here. Your next stitch will be there. So that's your join. So you're going to do a front post in that join right there. And then a back post in the next stitch. Don't miss it. It's easy to miss. Yeah. Because it'll be very tight. And then your front post. Again, if you don't end up in the right spot at the end, you can always add or, you know, reduce that sort of thing. So don't worry too much about it. All right. I'm not going to do any more. And no, I've just split that stitch but I'm going to let you head off on your own this is the easy part guys you've done this before front post back post get all the way around get to this stitch marker right here and meet me there don't forget to be careful here if you're not sure how to do that section just re-watch this section here all right so go all the way back get to the stitch marker right here and I'll meet you there once you're done Alrighty, so here we are close to the end. Now I've got my front, my back, and my front will be in this stitch here, and then there's the chain. So yarn over your hook, and again, it doesn't matter if this didn't add up, just put an extra one in here somewhere. Make sure that on the next row that you have a front, back, front, back, and when you get here, you have a front, and then you've got your chain two. And I have split that stitch, but we'll work that out in a minute. So there's my front right there. And I'm taking that out because I've split it. Hopefully you didn't split yours. Uh, there's one loop. Make sure you slip stitch into your stitch with your stitch marker in it, like so. Yeah, and then chain one and two. Pop your stitch marker in, guys. You know what to do here. Super easy. I'm going to start you off and the rest is yours. All right, so this is where we are. And then we have our front right there. Remember the front post is the first one. Do your front post. Do your back post. Do your front. Do your back. You know what you're doing. You don't need me. Certainly don't. So we're going to have some explanation here. Get excited, guys. Get excited. All right. So, okay. Let's straighten everything up. You've done one row of ribbing. Yep. Only one. So, all right. So what we're going to do now is extra small to two extra large you do this row that you're going to do, you need to do this row twice, all right? The row that we've just done, do that two more times. And then we're going to make some adjustments after that, all right? So for extra small to two extra large, do this row two more times. For three extra large to five extra large, you guys just need to do this one row that we're going to do right now. The row that we've started, just do it once. And I want everyone to meet us back here when you have completed the amount of rows for your size. 
all right? So extra small to two extra large, you need to do two rows of ribbing. Three extra large to five extra large, you need to do one row of ribbing. Everyone meet us back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, so here we are at the end of this row. Now, uh, I did leave a little message saying to go up half a hook size when you're doing this ribbing. Now, I didn't from the beginning, so I'm going to continue what I'm doing. It has come across slightly tight for me, but if you were on the hook size higher, like you know an extra half a hook size up then yours won't be tight all right so I'm just going to finish off my front post in this area here everyone should be here I want everyone to slip stitch to join <laughs> you know what let me take my stitch marker out it's been all the way through this tutorial hasn't it guys <laughs> um uh, where are we? Here we are. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. So everyone, look how tight it is. I wonder I couldn't get it in. Everyone slip stitch to join and pull up a loop for a moment. What I want everyone to do, now these are the instructions for our different sizes. Um, three extra large to five extra large, you should have had one row less. Try it on, make sure it fits you. If it does, you're going to cast off with us here. Medium, all the way up to five extra large, you should be casting off here. If you are extra small and small, try it on. If it does look a little bit loose, just do one more row. So either way, you guys can either do one more, one more row or take one row off to suit your own neck edge. Um, and if it's really, really loose, which it won't be because I worked this out and it's actually quite tight for me. If it's really loose, you can do the second row. You can do as many rows as you want to tighten up your neck edge. But this should actually fit everyone perfectly. Guess what we're going to do? Chop, chop, chop. Weave in that end. I'm not going to do it with you. You know how to do it. Weave it in because we are going to do the final step. This is going to take a little longer than our neck edge because we have quite a few extra squares. So your job now is to decide, and let's get a close up, which hook size you would like to use. I'm going to stick to the four. It's going to make it a little tight for me. I would suggest when I say four, I use the five millimeter hook to make my squares. All right, so I'm going to drop right down to the four. Not necessary. You can drop down to the 4.5 or you could either use the same uh, hook that you use to create your top with. It's entirely up to you. Yours truly is going to stick to what I've been using all along, which I messed up. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, I, no, not true. This was supposed to have been used for the sleeve, but not necessarily for the base. The 4.5 I use for the base of the black. But to keep in sync of this top, I'm going to use a 4. Entirely up to you, okay? Now, with this one here, I decided to actually start my... Let's bring this out to, you know, where we need to be. Um, all right, let's show you the top first, right? This is the front of your top. Yeah, we just did the sleeves and we just did the neck edge. Bring it all the way up. That's the front of the base. Now, again, this is up to you. But I find it better to not pop the starting chain in the center back when it comes to the base. I find it better to pop it on a side. So that's your underarm and the side that you're going to go through the back. All right. It doesn't matter, it's either way. So if you want to do what I'm doing, flip it around the other way. Yeah, so that's your armhole and this is your base. And we are working on the right side of our work. Yeah, and all you need to do, find your armhole. Now, extra small and small, you'll have a seam on your armhole. So you need to pop your um, stitch marker there just before the seam line, all right? But for the larger sizes, your middle will look something like that. So grab the square. This is the side seam. This is right on the side of your arm. Your arm goes all the way down from your middle of your arm, and that's the side of your body, all right? So 
uh, there's your your corners. You've got one, two, and three. Pop your stitch marker in that first stitch for medium to five extra large. That's where you'll be. Grab the hook size that you want to use. Pop it in that stitch marker. Yours truly is rushing now because I want it done. <laughs> this is the final step, guys. Get excited. Get excited. I am. Look at me shake. I always shake when I start to get to the end of a um, very big piece. And it's not just a big piece that we're at the end of. It's the end of all our Halloween projects. I'm very excited. Oh, anyway, <laughs> let's move right along. She can't stop, guys. Chain one and two. Uh, oops. Two. Grab your red, orange. <laughs> red now, I'm saying. Orange or yellow stitch marker and pop it on that stitch or in that stitch or you can take that one there out now you don't need that there anymore but leave one on the chain that you're going to slip stitch into at the end of the round and once again uh, extra small and small you wait there for me but everyone else you're going to crochet over your tail with your half double crochets and you can you know crochet two stitches three stitches four stitches whatever and then pass your tail at the back whatever suits you i don't know what have i done four let's say five that'll do and i'm just going to drop my tail at the back i'm still going to weave that in and um then cut don't just assume that's done and then cut yeah that can come undone all right so now we are half doubling <laughs> half doubling half trebling <laughs> half double us half treble uk all the way to and i've just got to be careful because that is a stitch tight stitch on that fancy join that I don't like doing that everybody likes doing uh, I don't like doing it I seriously don't like it but anyway all right so we are here all right so I just did all of that across this way extra small and small you chain your two in that stitch that you are in pop your stitch marker in the top of the second chain and everyone now should be at a join now I'm just going to give it a tight tug and close that stitching up a little bit now what i want you to do simple start your half double or half treble okay hold it there jump right into the next corner hold it there or tighten it up a little yarn over your hook pull a loop through and once again you're going to that very first stitch don't skip it and you are doing half doubles US half trebles UK all the way everyone should be doing this now all right so guess what your job is to do you've done this on the sleeves and the neck edge your job is to do that half treble let's try it again half double US or half treble UK in every stitch all the way across get to the corners do your two together and then continue to do that all the way all the way crocheting over your tails guys um, if you've got them if you haven't yay go you um, crochet all the way across get to your very last stitch here and I'll meet you back here once you're done Alrighty guys, here we are, she's singing now. Oh, she gets happy at the end of a tutorial. Um, Alright, so I have one stitch left right there. I'm going to do my last half double there, or half treble UK. And that chain two is in that stitch. Alright, so you guys are going to slip stitch into there. Like so, taking out your stitch marker. Once again, chain one and two, popping that stitch marker back in there. <laughs> if you can get it in. <laughs> Stop laughing. All right. Um, so we are going to do exactly what we've been doing in every ribbing section. Front post and back post. Now, extra small and small, you will have that real thin look when you do yours. And I'll show you that in a minute once we get past this area. Front. Let's bring that out a little bit. And back. Front. 
front and back. I always struggle with the back one. It uh, gets caught on other threads. <laughs> you may find that as well, but it does. It gets caught in other threads. Just wait there extra small and small if you haven't started. If you have, you can continue along, but we are close to that area. In fact, we are here now. That's the last stitch in this corner. So I'm on a front post, yeah? I need to do a back post in that last stitch. That's the first stitch in this corner. So right in the middle there, we need to do whatever we're on, which we're on a front post. We need to do a front post around that weird looking stitch. Extra small and small, that's where you would, would have been in the beginning. Then you needed to do your next post, whatever that may be, and ours is back. And then front, I don't think I need to show you any more. Get excited. All right, so easy, easy now. Front post and back post all the way around, making sure you are getting into those corners, that corner area right there. And get all the way around, get back to this stitch marker and get excited. We're going to have some instructions once we get there. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of this round. And I have one more front to do right there. I'm on my back, I have another front. If you haven't lined up here and it didn't work, squeeze another front somewhere. <laughs> squeeze it in. It doesn't matter even if you go on your little chains area, just squeeze it in because you need to have it marrying up. All right, this chain two will act as your back post in this round and every other round thereafter. All right. Um... Okay, slip stitch into your stitch with your stitch marker, like so, and get ready for some instructions. Firstly, let's chain one and two, all sizes. Pop that stitch marker in there. All right, and then just grab another stitch marker. Let's grab a blue one. It keeps falling out of my hand and pop it in here and let's get ready for some instructions. All right, so we're gonna go right down to there and the, the instructions are simple, all right? This is gonna to start to pull with me because I'm using a four millimeter hook. You guys won't be, you'll be using the half size, yeah? So the instructions are as follows. Extra small and small, you do two more rounds, okay? That's all you need to do. Two more rounds, try it on. If it is not as long as you want, then do a third round, all right? But the pattern states two more rounds for you. Medium to two extra large, you do four more rounds. Exactly the same as this one here, you do four more rounds, yeah? Three extra large to five extra large, you do five more rounds. But this is very simple here, all right? Front post, back post, from now on, you know exactly what you're doing. Just going into the fronts, doing your fronts, going into the backs, doing your backs, and so on, all the way through. Get around here, slip stitch, and you're done with your round. Then you want to do your next whatever rounds it is for your size. So simple as that, guys. Head off on your own. Do the rounds that you see right here for your size. Meet me back here, and we'll talk about finalising our Granny Square sweater vest. Alrighty guys, get excited, start doing your happy dance because we are on our last leg. <laughs> That's it, we're done. <laughs> Don't you love it? Alright, let's bring this up nice and close. Alright, so where are we? I have done my back post. I need to do one more front post right there. It's been tight all along that one, hasn't it? Because it's had the actual um, chain stitches on it. So there you go. So we're going to slip stitch into the tight stitch for the very last time. Let me take this out for the very last time. Excuse me. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, here we go. Slip stitch in our last stitch for the very last time. Pull up a loop, cut your thread. I'm not going to because my thread, well, actually, this is the end of the skein for me. <laughs> I probably should have cut it. There you go. <laughs> That's the end of the skein for me. 
<laughs> That's all I have left of this scheme. I did actually open up another one, but there you go. All right, so here we go, guys. <laughs> uh, we are complete. Why am I upside down? Let's bring it all back to normal. Don't forget you need to weave that end in. And whilst I was off air, I weaved in all of my ends. Yeah? Come on, Mary, you can do this. <laughs> It doesn't want to go for me, guys. It doesn't want to go. But there you go. That's the neck edge. That's our armholes. That's our body. And that is our base ribbing. Guys, this has taken like a 100 years. I've just lost my needle on the ground. But there you go. Don't forget to weave in that last end. A very special thank you to the lovely Jay for her colour combination of this particular one right here. She chose the black and white for Halloween and she did just the right thing. And I decided to make it in this colour on the channel because you probably would not have been able to see the black and white on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> for the tutorial but anyway thank you very much for joining us I'm you can probably tell there's a massive smile on my face because not only have we finished this project but we have finished all of our Halloween projects and there they are nice and quickly I know you've been watching for so long but these are the other Halloween items that we were making now if you wanted to make any one of these items you've got your thigh warmer you've got your shawl and you've got a few other things um, that you will see in the future as well if you wanted to make any one of those I have left a link to the Halloween playlist the very first link you see in the description box down below and you can have the option to make the other ones all right just click on that link go through and watch the playlist from the base all the way up and you can make these other projects but in the meantime thank you very much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and also don't forget that we actually have lives at 4 p.m wednesday afternoons 10 a.m saturday mornings melbourne australia time marry that up with your country and saturday mornings we have a thing called live antics where you as a subscriber on the live gets to choose the color combination of our very next tutorial get way too excited thank you very much for joining us and happy halloween good luck everyone guys and i will actually see everyone during our halloween video on halloween yay <laughs> ciao for now oh i'm so happy with my gear oh they're all so good